Celtics have won four in a row. 25 out of 28, and they control the tip. They put Dumars on Dennis Johnson, so that means Isaiah Thomas is guarding Ainge. Benson is on Larry Bird, who goes in with the first shot. I don't think we're going to see as much running today, Dick, as perhaps we have in the past, particularly by uh, the Pistons, who want to defend less possession, so they don't want to run. They do, and the opportunity is there, but it's not they don't. Benson hits outside. Benson has started 23 in a row, and the Pistons have lost only four of those games, so he's given them solid minutes. Dennis Johnson, who had a wrist problem, went to the doctor yesterday, shows no ill effects as the Celtics lead 4-2. to two. You talked about the new guard arrangement by the Pistons. How's that work? With two point guards, Isaiah Thomas and Joe, Joe Dumars, you really can put a pressure on that big guard of the opposition. He's not used to playing a penetrator like Joe Dumars. DJ is going to be a key man in the defense of the Celtics today. Bill Lane Beer, who makes his living offensively hitting that kind of a shot outside, ties the ball game up. And here's Larry Bird. Thomas the rebound. So normally we see end-to-end, -end, coast to coast basketball, and maybe not so much that today. Off the leg inside, and Benson comes in. Any points they get from Benson has to be a bonus. Exactly right, Dick. But uh, on that penetration at time by uh, Isaiah Thomas, that's how they're developing their inside game. Make the low post defenders move, and it opens up for easy passes and offensive rebounds. Harris got free inside. And we have another tie. By the way, Benson scored 15 points in the first period Friday against Atlanta. Prior to that, he had been in a scoring slump. Trapuka doubled up with Bird and Wedman, loses the ball. Isaiah Thomas told me before the game that Trapuka's the key to the Pistons winning today. Wedman misses. Thomas winds up with it, and it's a four-on-two break for the Pistons. Dumars in the corner. And Detroit leads. The Pistons are an excellent pull-up jump shooting team off the break. They don't necessarily have to take it strong to the hoop. Chuck Daly, who had problems early in the year, and uh, his future might have been in doubt, but he may be talking again with Detroit about the future in Detroit with the Pistons. Parrish inside score. With Daly, that. by the way, is a free agent at the end of this year. Parrish has done so much more offensively and able to do that now. With Wedman in the lineup, Dick, uh, pulls out the defense, and he can go one-on-one -on -one against a guy like Lambeer. He's not going to play a lot of tough defense early for ah. sure fouls. Dumars gets the offensive rebound. He's a smart, poised rookie out of McNeese State in Louisiana. Ainge doesn't go for the fake, but Thomas has too much speed. Bird gets the rebound. Lead to Ainge, getting back to Puka. And Trapuca made Ains try to earn that play. Good play by Kelly Trapuca. Thomas runs into Dennis Johnson and they'll call the foul on Isaiah. A really difficult job on trying to contain a real flea like Isaiah Thomas. You can't go for fakes. You got to keep him in between your knees so he can't penetrate. Just under nine minutes remaining in the opening period. High score. We've already had four ties. Parrish. Dennis Johnson saves it just before it goes over the line. Ainge quickly for three. He didn't have much time to square up for that shot, and Danny Ainge, three-pointer, gives Boston the lead by that many. Last year, the Celtics and Pistons met in the Eastern semifinals with the Celtics winning in six. Trapuca hitting his first outside shot. Kelly Trapuca has been a major factor in the Detroit street. Just getting more shots and they're calling his number on set plays a lot more. Bird. Going to call the foul on Kent Benson. From behind, Benson. Do you or don't you double team Larry Bird in the low post? That's what the Pistons are wondering today. What they should do there because he kills you with passes when you double team him. He'll beat you one way or another. Ainge top. Parrish again. They double with Dumars. Rotating, quick, shifting defense of Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge has been in a slump. You wouldn't know it by his two outside shots so far, but he has been. But he keeps trucking away with his quickness and his hustle. Thomas with his first point, so all five Piston starters are on the board. You don't contain Isaiah Thomas either. Uh, he's got that good outside shot. When you try to take that away, Zippy goes by you. Dennis Johnson pulls up. Gets the ball. Bird passes to Whitman. 
Normally that's a chippy for Wedman, and it was a fine pass by Bird. Dumars. Joe Dumars, the third guard in the draft, who has been starting, sending John Long to practically oblivion. And the score now is 14 to 13 Pistons. Largely a half-court game for both sides so far. With all this outside shooting, they can get a third man back on defense pretty easily. Wedman gets the offensive board. Bird inside. What a play by Bird, moving without the ball. Walden and McHale, how do you like to have those two coming off the bench for you? <laughs> Unbelievable when, when those two guys get in the game. Thomas hits his second in a row. Isaiah had 39 points in Detroit's win over Boston. Larry Bird had 47 in one game for the Celtics against these Pistons. Harris goes strong. Another chance. As that one-on-one, -on -one, they're able to develop because the defense of the Pistons has been spread out. Parrish is much more arrested at this juncture of the season than he has been in the past because of Bill Walton's presence. One point lead for the Celtics. Trapuca over Wetman, blocking out his bird. Nearly halfway through this opening stanza, Dennis Johnson goes all the way. Lane Beer, outlet pass, two on one. Dumars. And Detroit takes the lead again, 18 to 17. Oh, they're just pushing the ball at the defense, and nobody's willing to go out, particularly a bird, and challenge a real tricky dribbler and giving up the outside shot. Surprise, Washington leading Milwaukee with a 10-game winning streak as Larry Bird has six points in the ball game with that outside shot. The Bucks playing outstanding ball with the third-best record in the NBA, but their 10-game streak is on the line. Shot won't go, and a foul called against the Celtics. And we have our first time out of the game with 5.33 to go in the opening period. It's been that close. If you're, you're going to give up layups. Pistons will inbound. Shooting so far in the game. Both teams shooting well. Detroit out of sight. Isaiah Thomas, who thought about quitting at some point this year when the Pistons were really wallowing, enjoying the game a lot more. Trapuca has a screen from Benson, nothing doing there. Bird is playing like a safety man. He's not really guarding Kelly. And he gives Kelly the wide open shot, and it's short, and a loose ball foul. That was called against the Pistons. Good blocking out that time by the Celtics. They had a wall of three white jerseys there. Tommy, it looks like Bird is allowing Trapuca to get off that shot. Well, Wedman's supposed to be playing him. He switched that time, and uh, Chuck Daly wants Bird to play Trapuca because that's the only guy he feels that can will make Bird play a little defense. Knocked away by Lane Beer. It's still Boston ball, and Kevin McHale, who came back from a sore Achilles tendon, comes back in the ball game. He's missed 14 of the last 17 games, but played 26 minutes or 30 minutes and scored 26 against the Clippers on Friday night. Ainge misses. He had hit a three-pointer and a long range shot earlier. Celtics by one. Lane Beer. McHale the rebound. So McHale in the game. Wedman goes out. Now you're saying Chuck Daly doesn't mind this lineup. Is that right? <laughs> Ainge hit. No, because uh, he feels that Trapuca will get Bird's attention defensively and take him out of that team defensive concept. Okay. Trapuca trying to get free, and Bird is guarding him. McHale is guarding Lane Beer, and they have Parrish on Kent Benson. Well, the reason that they've got McHale on Lane Beer is because they want to take away the outside shot, and they feel McHale can get up closer to on him than Parrish can. Thomas with six, Dumars with six, so the backcourt for Detroit leading the way so far. 21-20 Celtics. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Well, here's the disadvantage to Trapuca, Garden, Bird. And an illegal defense called against the Pistons, and Isaiah Thomas is the guilty party. A great height advantage over Kelly Trapuca, but McHale is going to be a problem unless he gets blocked out. A good defensive rebound at that time by Kevin McHale. Larry Bird, eight points, and it looks like he has his long-range shooting eyes on today. 23 to 20, the Celtics lead under four minutes remaining, 3.54 to be exact. Dumars off the screen, and Detroit staying in the game with their outside shooting. Well, they have a play, a counter play, a triple pick for Kelly Trapuca, sometimes for Joe Dumars. Aim taking a lot of shots today to try to get his shooting eye back. 
Thomas fouled by Johnson from behind. And that's only the second team foul against Boston. They are effectively being able to stop each other's fast break because Trapuca is an outside shooter. He makes an easy transition into the defense, and so does Bird. Normally, the Pistons do outscore the Celtics in the backcourt. It's another story up front, though. Going inside, and Thomas breaks free. Good play by Isaiah Thomas. Uh, they got mixed up on their defense, the Celtics. Danny Ainge made a bad mistake. Eight points for Dumars, who's four for four from the field, and eight points for Isaiah Thomas, 16 of the 24. Nobody has been able to effectively contain Kevin McHale. That time they isolated him with no chance of help. Boston by one, under three minutes to go. Trapuca against Bird. Bird hits the floor, taken away by McHale. Kevin McHale can handle it and dribble it. Not too often, though. I'm sure Casey Jones doesn't want to see a lot of that. A year ago tomorrow, Kevin McHale scored 56 points here in the Garden against the Pistons, the most points ever scored against Detroit. It has something to cool. The docking thing. This was Friday night in Dallas with the score tied. That shot won the game. And watch the Philadelphia 76ers celebrate the doctor, giving the Sixers a three-point win over Dallas. Julius Irving, Charles Barkley, and the rest of the Philadelphia 76ers against the Indiana Pacers next Sunday. Kent Benson has had all kinds of trouble guarding Kevin McHale over the years, even, I guess, maybe in Big Ten days. But uh, he's not going to be able to get any help. There's no room. There's a total isolation down there. And no chance for double teams on Kevin. Thomas goes right by and draws the foul. That was sheer quickness and change of direction for Isaiah Thomas, the all-star MVP for the second time in three years, and he'll shoot. You know, when Isaiah penetrates like that and gets by his man, that forces the back line of the other team's defense to adjust and they lose their concentration on their own man. Val was on McHale. When people talk about Detroit not having a good inside game offensively, a lot of times the guard set that up. You're absolutely right, Dick, because if Isaiah or Joe Dumars can penetrate and move the back line of the defense, Lambeer and Benson and Curtin can get offensive rebounds. Bird finds Ainge on the other side. Wide open is Danny Ainge. And here's Trapuca with the rebound. The Celtics lead by two. Pistons trying to tie it up. Earl Curitan filling the lane does. Earl Curitan, who's been the backup power forward after starting the first 12 games of the year, ties the score. Two minutes to go in the first. You know, with Wedman being out of the ball game, the Pistons may really have a lot more opportunities to fast break now. Bird for 10 points now. Larry Bird averaging 25 points a game, the only one in the league amongst the leaders in five separate categories. 140 on the clock. Dumars finds Trapuca in the corner. And so far, the Pistons have indeed been immensely successful with their perimeter shooting. Well, when an outside shooter like Trapuca gets his game going, it's tough to shut him down. Bird is doubled with Dumars and Trapuca. Same play again to Ames. He's covered. Dumars doing a job on Dennis Johnson, and the foul is committed on Dumars. You're going to see the fourth man up, the trailer, as they put heat on the Celtics defense, a four-on-two, and they really spread them out. And the Celtics are a lot slower with Wedman being on the bench right now. The Pistons have the faster ball club out there. And the fast break points illustrate that. So Dennis Johnson is shooting right now. And misses the first one. Coming into the ballgame, Jerry Seasting, who has been outstanding, is the third guard for the Celtics, formerly with Indiana. And Vinnie Johnson, who can light up any arena, coming in for the Pistons, replacing Isaiah Thomas. Vinnie Johnson, of course, had that amazing 34 points against the Celtics in the playoffs last year, and then had 35 in November this year against Boston. So I think he likes his team. Well, still a problem. they got twin, twin uh, midgets. You don't consider Vinny Johnson no. a midget, but he plays the point guard position. Good passer. High score with Dennis Johnson missing both free throws. Bill Lane here, short. Dennis Johnson the rebound with a minute to go in the opening period. McHale guarded by Curran. Doubled with Vinny Johnson, leaving Seasting open. Harris 
Mops it down to Bird. And an offensive foul called against Larry Bird, who doesn't like that call. Here's Bird. Trapuca really gets positioned up on him, doesn't go for the fake, and kind of gives it a uh, active yeah. studio job. That was, Emmy for that one. That's the first Boston turnover, and I agree with Bird on that one. 40 seconds to go, 14 on the clock. And we have an offensive foul called against the Pistons. Kelly Trapuca, his first. And Bill Walton, who's been a hero here in Boston, comes into the ballgame. Detroit has adjusted their defense very, very nicely here in the first quarter, Dick. Depending upon who's been in the game for the Celtics, they've made the proper adjustments. Bird nearly had his 12th point in and out. It was a half a minute to go. Score is tied at 29. Pistons look to take the lead. Detroit led only once, that at 8-6, to six, but they had one-point lead throughout this first period. Dumars over Seaspin, and Dumars. By the way, Tommy talks about the ability to play both guard spots. Dumars is in there because he's the best defensive player the Pistons ever had, according to Chuck Daly. And they say he may be getting a little tired, not from offense, but from playing end-to-end -end defense. Bird gets free from Tribuca. The Redwood Trees and the buzzer sounds ending the period with the Detroit Pistons leading 31 to 29 and off the boards Bill Lane Beer who's leading the league has nine rebounds to spark Detroit. And uh, I think it, we can be a pretty good basketball team, but I think more so than anything, we have to be lucky. Uh, luck will play a very important part in, uh, in the way we play. What kind of luck? Uh, one guy on that team getting injured. <laughs> <laughs> he added some other things. That's what he's done so far. But in, since the All-Star break, Tommy, he's been in another world. 26 points and 12 assists, and he is just playing on a new level is probably one of the few guards in the NBA that can take over the game in the last two minutes and still make you uh, win the ball game. Second period, Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn. Kelly Trapuca. It's again, Trapuca's with six points in the ball game. By the way, we'll be hearing from Pat O'Brien at the half in a very interesting at the half segment coming up today. So stay with us. Walton, guarded by Lane Beer. Short. Short with it, and the rebound by Lane Beer. That's his tenth. Yeah, Lane Beer has played some very nice defense here in this first half. Keeps Walton outside offensively, so the big man has to move away. Bird is on Trapuca, who's off to a good start, coming around the screen from Curit, and Trapuca hits again. Well, Trapuca, Bird has left them all alone, and I think Trapuca, they may have to rethink that situation. 35-29, six-point lead opened up by Detroit from McHale with six points of his own, narrows it again. Tight ball game throughout, and in the first period, the Celtics just under 50, but look at Detroit's dazzling 68%. Vinnie Johnson, and it goes for him. B.J., who likes to play against the Celtics. I mean, they're doing classic textbook running through their offense right now, the Pistons. And part of their success story. Bird over Trapuca short. Vinny Johnson knocks it away. But they say it was last touched by the Celtics. So reinforcements. Isaiah Thomas returns to the game for the Pistons. Rick Mahorn comes in. Larry Bird is out of the game for Boston. Wetman comes back in for the Celtics. Three-man guard, uh, guard rotation. They don't go to the fourth guard, the Pistons, which has helped Vinny Johnson's game. Curitan out to Trapuca, guarded by Dennis Johnson. Foul on the play, so Dennis Johnson is guarding Kelly, who's fouled. By the way, the three piston guards are 10 of 11 from the floor in this game so far. Well, that twin midgets effect has really made some dividends here. A penetration, Ainge wasn't able to contain that, nor Seasting, and uh, DJ not able to really contain Dumars. Foul on Dennis Johnson was his second, and of course, this crowd used to seeing the Celtics roll, and Sometimes it takes them a while to do so. I have nothing to cheer about Wait. as the Pistons. Now 38-31 as Trapuca makes one out of two. 
Duke over North Carolina, 62 to 60 in the second half of that Atlantic Coast Conference battle at Durham. McHale guarded by Curit. A couple of fakes, a foul, and the basket will count. Put anybody you want in the league on him, and he's become such a great low post player, nobody can stop him. Watch the fake right here. Sees the double team develop with Trapuca at a corner of his eye, gives it a second fake, and it's in. McHale has hit all four of his shots from the field, so he has given the Celtics something. Last a big guard type, and they want to go with the three little people. You're going to beat that into the ground, aren't you? Well, I'll tell you that it is a, it is a throwback. It's a renaissance of old-time basketball. That's Two good ball-handling guards. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Two John? good ball-handling little guards. Speaking of guards, not so little. Rick Carlisle's in the ballgame for the Celtics, and Vinny Johnson with great balance. Suspended in the air scores. So Johnson has four off the bench, and the Pistons lead by six. So Carlisle's in the game with Seasting, and the backup guards in for Boston. This is their true second unit right now. Green for the team, Celtics. right? Yep. McHale fires it, knocked away by Curitan, anticipated the pass to Walton nicely. Four on three, but calming the ball, called against Isaiah Thomas. They had an easy one that time. Joe Taylor said, we can't give up those kind of baskets. 9.20 remaining in the first half. Lead is six for Detroit. Mahorn battling Walton. Seasting with a good fake on Thomas. Good passing. Carlisle hits. Seasting made that play happen. Uh, Seasting and Carlisle are getting to know each other, and the out Carlisle should be shooting a little bit more. He's a fine outside shooter. And a fine game against the Lakers in Los Angeles. Celtics have been getting... Great results from their bench all the way down to the 10th and 11th man. Vinny Johnson, McHale the rebound. Outlets out to Seasting. Two on one with Carlisle against Isaiah. <laughs> Lead is cut to two, and all of a sudden we're having a fast break affair, and the crowd seems to enjoy it more. Well, Boston's been having their troubles getting the fast break started. They're getting beaten. Uh, the Pistons are getting three guys back quickly. McHale, key man for the boards inside to start the break. Big crowd in the middle for Trafuca. Five on the shot clock. In a crowd. Traveling call against Kelly. Tony Campbell is a second year from Ohio State and got a chance to play early when Kelly Trapuca spent a lot of time on the bench. Replaces Trapuca, who goes out with nine points for Detroit. Well, Chuck Daly told me, Dick, that the reason Campbell played a lot of time is that uh, Kelly was subject to injuries and they had to find a guy, either Campbell or Tyler. Wetman. On the board, two points for Scott Wedman, and we have another tie. That's our seventh of the game. Wedman commits the foul against Tony Campbell. And by playing him in the early part of the season, Chuck Daly found out he's got quite a basketball player there that he can uh, give uh, Kelly Trapuca some good rest. He can shoot, and he's a better defensive player than Trapuca. Off the screen is Vinnie Johnson. Carlisle battling an inch for inch. And he commits the foul. Third team foul against Boston, but this time Vinnie Johnson will shoot. I think the Celtics have a, uh, uh, a bad feeling about Vinnie Johnson. He has really hurt them over the years. He seems to be able to eat up the Boston guards. And the reason is because he plays like a quick forward. He plays bigger than he is. He jumps over there, people. Remember that 22 point fourth period last year at. Uh, the Joe Lewis Arena. I mean, that was the most electrifying moment that I remember in the playoffs last year, other than the championship. Detroit hot from the backcourt, to say the least. 11 of 13. And a one-point piston lead. McHale lost the ball. Vinny Johnson has Campbell down court. Thomas guarded by Wedman. See where the mismatch is. It's Campbell and Seasting. Trying to post up Seasting. They haven't found him yet. Now they have. Tony Campbell goes up and called for the offensive foul. I think Jerry Seastein got a little uh, away with a little Stanislavski defense. You know, act as studio. Bird getting set to come back in for the Celtics with 7.25 remaining in the first half. Dick Stockton, Tom Heinz, and Pat O'Brien here at Boston Garden. Off the screen, Wedman. Campbell playing fine defense against Scotty. He scored, but Campbell played him as well as he could play him. He beat him over the pick, 
and he went back with him and he got on his shooting hand. That's, you can't do much better than that. Celtics by one. 12 lead changes. This unit for the Celtics has been able to fast break, whereas the first unit was not. Thomas misses. Walt outlets back to Thomas. In a crowd, Thomas puts it on, passes. And a foul. Carlisle has no chance defending Isaiah Thomas, and he dished it off to Earl Curitan, who will shoot. I mean, he teases you with the ball, and when he can penetrate, watch him pull the ball off the outlet. He's teasing the Carlisle with the ball, slips by him, and look at that nice laydown pass to the forward. Made the back line move on defense. Defenses in the NBA have not been able to come to grips with the outside shooters on the court for the Celtics. And it's something novel. By putting Kevin McHale back into the lineup as a starter, it allowed them to go back to their old defense that has been, you know, doubled down on low post players. But it's an awful difficult decision for Casey Jones. Yeah, because how can you keep this guy from starting uh, when he is Kevin McHale and people have to watch for that matchup right off the top of the game? Uh, I, I would, you know, it's tough not to go with a combination that's produced some big wins and a lot of fun and a certain style of basketball that produces wins. Point well taken. Curitan misses the first free throw. The foul, by the way, was on Bill Walton. Detroit not shooting well from the line. Four for eight. And with 6.46 to go, another tie. Well, Ricky Mahorn is going to end up playing defense against Robert Parrish. Seasting in the corner. That was a lead pass by Bird. What a pass by Bird. It was like a quarterback who throws to a spot instead of the player. Well, that's the what I'm talking about, the uh, new style defense. They don't know how to really go out and stop the outside game. But it was the pass by Bird that I haven't seen in a long time that way, just going to a point. That could have been thrown away. Turnover. Celtics have it. Leading by two. Curitan on Bird. Bird gets the baseline off. Blocked and a foul. Coming back in is Bill Lane Beer, who has 10 rebounds in the ball game and sparked Detroit's first period lead. Curitan commits the foul. So here's Larry Bird, and people saying maybe not the best non-center ever to play the game, but maybe the best period ever to play the game. What I like right now is that this man has reached another plateau in the game. I mean, he's at the plateau right now. He's willing things to happen. He's making them happen with his mind. You know, like the guy that can move uh, a salt shaker on the table. That's what's going on in his head. 12 points for Bird. He's the leading scorer in the game. Dumars with 10 leads Detroit. Dumars not in there right now. Lane Beer back in action with a line drive shot by Bill. He's led the league in rebounding most of the year, and Chuck Daly said gets as much of his ability as anyone in the league. Seasting off the screen, double team, loose ball. Pistons doubling nicely. Vinny Johnson with Wetman back, loops it to Tony Campbell. Pistons got a very fast team out there right now, and the Celtics being careless with the ball. It's a lot of easy shots for the Pistons. Larry Bird with 14 points. And the Celtics break the tie. Thomas in traffic. Basket good and a foul on the baseline. And he can put the Pistons in front. You know, what really makes it tough with Isaiah Thomas is that if he comes down the right side of the court and you push him back to the middle, he can beat you. If you try and keep him in front like Seasting is right now, he gets by you and it frees up his shooting hand. So you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Isaiah Thomas now with 12 points. And the Celtics bring back their starting guard tandem, Danny Ainge, with the ball, along with Dennis Johnson in there. Bird, 6 of 12, make it 7 of 13. And 16 points for Bird as Boston leads by one. Winding down to five minutes to go in the first half. And they're going to call traveling against Curitan, trying to make a move on Bird. They have had Curtin for the last few weeks looking for a shot in that low post, hoping to develop a solid inside game. Celtics by one. Their biggest lead was four. Detroit had a seven-point lead in the second period early. Wedman. 
Puritan. Knocked out of bounds. When the Pistons beat the Celtics in their one meeting in January, Earl Curitan had a great game, 12 rebounds. Uh, he's such an enthusiastic player. I'll tell you, when he comes off the bench, something's going to happen. He has a championship ring to his credit. He was a member of the Philadelphia 76ers. That was the 83 outfit. Nine on the shot clock. Thomas looking inside. Lane Beer hits. They're coming off the screen is just like you diagram. Well, they got such good outside shooters. Lane Beer can hit from out there. That's a great shot for a center to be able to do that. Parrish can't fight through picks. The live and die by the outside shot. So far, the Pistons are living with it. Wetman on the miss by Parrish. Banks it in for the Celtics, who lead it 52 to 51 with four minutes remaining in the first half. Ames trying to go for the ball on Thomas. Try not to get faked out, probably. Lane Beer almost walked. The crowd would have called it. Wild shot by Vinny Johnson. Bird knocked away. Boy, they're scrapping Detroit today, aren't they? On the other side, Curran. They are playing a scrappy game. Well, uh, that's the benefit of Tony Campbell. I mean, he's a much better rebounder than Trapuca and almost as good a shooter. And a better defender. But you need Kelly in there, who has nine points, not in there at the moment. Ainge on a runner. Nine for Danny Ainge. 3.20 to go. Inside, what a pass, Thomas to Curitan, as good as you'll see. <laughs> he's on national television. That was a classic. 20 lead changes in this first half here at Boston Garden, where the Celtics have lost only once all year. Ains from Larry Bird. They're the guys who will be coming in shortly. When you spread out the defense like the Celtics can do and pass as well as they can, cutters make easy hoops. Isaiah Thomas, 14. Bird, 16. Who else did you think would be high scorers at this point? Here's Bird again, and he'll go to the line. Larry Bird and Isaiah Thomas, two great players. They lead their team in just about every category. You can't blame Isaiah for not leading his team in rebounds. And we have a timeout, 2.45 remaining in the half. It's been a one-point game through most of the half, and right now the Pistons lead. Pat? All right, Dick, thank you very much. Coming up at the half, we'll devote the entire at the half to a disturbing story today. And in-depth look into this week's Hudson Square Garden in New York City. They honored Earl the Pearl Monroe. A capacity crowd, along with some of Earl's former teammates from that great Nick championship team, well, they were all on hand to celebrate the retirement of Earl's number 15. Wherever I go in life, I'll always be a New York Nick. I thank you very much. He is still the Pearl, a Hall of Famer. Let's go back to Dick in our Hall of Famer, Tommy Hudson. Dick. Thank you very much, Pat. And, of course, Red Holtzman, who coached Earl the Pearl in New York, also going into the Hall of Fame at Springfield with Tommy, along with Billy Cunningham of the 76ers, Stan Watts, who coached at Brigham Young, Fred Taylor, who was John Havlicek's coach at Ohio State, along with Jerry Lucas and Red Mahalik, an outstanding official going into the Hall of Fame. And if you joined us late, Tommy Heinsohn, Received a standing ovation from the sellout at Boston Garden. Let's get back to the game, Dick. <laughs> yeah, you're a little, you know, you know you're, you're such a humble guy, and we all appreciate that. <laughs> Shooting is sensational in this period, and for that matter, throughout the game. Bird hits the free throws, and he has 18 points. And we'll be looking at his, uh, his look for the triple-double, which is double figures in points, rebounds, and assists. That's the triple-double. And right now, he's been in double figures and points for a long time. Three-point attempt, Isaiah Thomas. Bad shot off the back rim. Pistons maintain it, though, with 2.25 on the clock. Different matchups by the Celtics, Dick. Uh, Dennis Johnson, well, he just switched off now, but I think he's going to try and guard Isaiah. Greg Kite is in the game, guarding Lane Beer. He's done well off the bench for the Celtics. Trapuca, still hot as Kelly, and he is in double figures with 11. Pistons regain the lead. 24 lead changes and nine ties in this game. Bird doesn't get a foul. Crowd can't understand it. Neither can number 33. And it's off Benson's hands out of bounds. Bird shaking his head. But they have now 
misused two fast break opportunities. They've, uh, they're leading, I think, Detroit 16 points to eight points in fast breaks. They could have had a lot more. 140 remaining in the half. Bird going up over several players, including Lane Beer. And it's 60 to 59, Boston. It's go at Kelly Trapuca time right now. He has difficulty guarding low post players. He's the last of a dying breed of that kind of a small, quick forward. From now on, they'll be 6'8 and can leap. Trapuca, but he comes out shooting. The basket will count. And we'll have a foul on Lane Beer, I believe, away from the basket. Chuck Daly can't understand it. The basket will count by Trapuca. Well, he Billy, has gotten Billy. by this first half. Lambier relatively unscathed in the foul department. An offensive foul that time. That kind of hurt him, but uh, he usually gets tough on defense. Not worried about his foul. Steal, Isaiah hand. Thomas, three on one. Kelly Trapuca at the other end. And if they're trying to take advantage of his defensive deficient series, the Trapuca has 15 points in his own right. Dennis Johnson regains control. Another shot. Again. Third time's a charm for DJ. 50 seconds to go in the first half. The Pistons lead by one. Biggest lead was seven by Detroit early in the second period. Watch how Detroit lines up three outside, isolating Thomas, who's fouled. They're sending him to the baseline on the pick and roll plays. Now here comes Dennis Johnson on the boards after the miss. A big guard can help on the boards, too. Watch him just hang tough, pull it down, and with nobody behind him now, kisses it off the glass easily. Ainge on the foul, and here is Thomas, 14 points so far in the game. Second in the league in assists behind Magic Johnson. Pistons continue to struggle from the free throw line. Rick Mahorn, the enforcer, back in there for the Pistons. And Bill Lane Beer goes out. Lane Beer has scored six. Eight assists for Isaiah Thomas today, averaging 11, as you saw, and he misses both free throws. But Detroit winds up with it. Thomas, Mahorn, and the former Washington Bullet. Stick, take it at the big guy, make him react, and then find his man. Isaiah does it beautifully. Bird can't save it. It's still, it still becomes Detroit ball. 24 seconds to go in the half. Three-point lead for Detroit. Duke beat North Carolina by that score today, and so if you've switched over, we've got a hot one going at Boston Garden between the Celtics and the Detroit Pistons, who have won 10 in a row, a record. 65-62, Detroit playing for the last shot of the first half. Isaiah Thomas, tight the rebound, three seconds. Celtics, long one by Dennis Johnson. It would have counted had it gone. But that is the end of the first half. Detroit led by two after one period, and they've added to their lead. And the Pistons trying to make it 11 in a row against the team with the best record, leading the Celtics 65-62. to Coming up, Pat O'Brien at the half. Live from Boston. Qualified from playing basketball in the National Basketball Association. With those words, NBA Commissioner David Stern banned New Jersey Nets All-Star Michael Ray Richardson from the game of basketball. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, and this is At the Half. Under the day, tragedy. Live from Boston. He has really not been around in this first half, and Lambeer already has 11 rebounds. Well, I don't think they've gone to Paris quite as much as they perhaps should have to try and get Lambeer in a little foul trouble, but that's going to allow Lambeer to really be freewheeling here in the second half. Milwaukee had its 10-game winning streak snapped at the hands of the Washington Bullets today, 125 to 104. So Detroit can gain a game as Isaiah Thomas on a pass from Dumars. This is a shot inside. Dumars was five for five from the field. Trapuca seven of nine. Thomas six of nine in the first half. McHale going to work against Ken Benson hits. McHale has been hot from the field and he has 11 points. Top scorers in the ball game. Bird. And Trapuca. Dumars hasn't missed yet. Tail guarding Lambeer tight outside. Ames doing a job on Isaiah Thomas, and Lambeer hits. A 
Kevin McHale was practically sitting in Lampier's jersey, and he still got the shot off. That's really quick shooting. A tough assignment for that man, Benson, against McHale. Benson's been playing good defense. Ten on the shot clock. I don't think the Celtics have established anybody to really go to. Danny Ainge for three points. That's an interesting aspect. They certainly haven't established Parrish except early in the ballgame. They might be looking to go to McHale a lot more here in this third quarter. But the three-pointer by Ainge ties the game up. Lane Beer misses, and the Celtics can take the lead. Dennis Johnson working against Dumars. Fine defensive player. Rookie, don't forget. Trying to go inside, Dennis Johnson, fine move. Pistons try to help to no avail. Well, Lambier was reluctant to move off of McHale to really close down the penetration. Little more than two minutes gone by here in this third period. Five on this 24-second clock. Three now, trouble. And a blind long shot goes in by Isaiah Thomas at the 24 second buzzer and it went off the glass. Well, desperation. If I were Casey Jones right now, I'd get my rosary beads out because <laughs> it looks like it might be one of those days for the Pistons. Dennis Johnson Jordan. misses, Kent Benson the rebound. And it's 70 to 69 in favor of the Pistons. Thomas trying to see if his luck holds up and it does. 19 points for Isaiah. 12 assists. Is he, is he tough? He makes you back up and he pulls up short, shoots jumpers, goes right, left around you. Harris getting his opportunity inside. Benson with a good outlet. Thomas tries to go by Dennis Johnson. Three. Dennis Johnson is hit with his third personal foul. Make no mistake about Isaiah Thomas. He's no angel out there. No, he isn't, but watch this shot right now by Isaiah from downtown as the clock was about to go off. Wow, that's lucky basketball. Don't be fooled by the smile, folks. 9.15 remaining in the third. In this phase two, only he's banging you when he's smiling They've at you. They've got a lot of good young talent, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how they play against one of the powers of the league. They're just looking for a takeover guy, that's all. Somebody to come through in a big ball game, and that's liable to solidify that team. One o'clock, remember, next Sunday. Thomas goes for three. No fight! McHale gets the rebound. Three minutes gone by, third period. Pistons by three. They led by one, two after one period. And three at the half. Look at Dumas, Hawk, Dennis Johnson. Ainge open. Danny Ainge, 16 points. It looks like he's come out of his slump. Celtics were able to do well even with it. Trapuke at the top. Guarded by Dennis Johnson. Benson. Got to keep them honest with shots like that, even if they don't go. Ainge back guarded by Isaiah. Harris. Ainge is open. Ainge hits. Two in a row for Ainge. Excellent pickup of the double by Robert Parrish to find Danny Ainge. Eight of 12 for Danny Ainge, but Kelly Trapuka with 17 points now. When they push the ball up the floor quickly, the Pistons, Trapuka heads right for the corner, and if the defense is in the lane, he's going to get the ball and score. He's the man, Isaiah Thomas told us before the game, who has to produce if the Pistons have a shot. He has in the U. Doesn't go for Bird. Loose ball. Eight. And the crowd of big man gave it a shot, and here's Dumars and Trapuka two on two for Detroit. Benson filling the lane. Out of Indiana, Kent Benson, a former number one pick. They have some pretty good forwards coming up. Big people, Benson and Lambeer, as trailers on the fast break. They use them very well. 7.25 remaining in the third. Benson fouls McHale. Things are starting to heat up here a little bit. Now watch this previous trip up the floor. Uh, Benson said, Kevin, you're not going to get near that ball. And Danny Ainge, uh, the little imp. Picks up the rebound. Second foul on Benson and Kevin McHale going to the line. Everybody's matchup problem was the top six man in the league last year, but starting this season and, of course, waiting his turn while Scott Wedman produces at forward. Well, Casey's gone back to the old style. You know, him starting Kevin in the third quarter 
is a meaningful change. Casey Jones doing another tremendous job as coach of this Celtic team. The record, same as it was last year. Best. Trapuca turn around over Dennis Johnson, banks it in. So they have Dennis Johnson guarding Kelly Trapuca, who's 9 of 11. Five minutes gone by in the period. McHale, just impossible to stop that. When you have a passer who can shoot the outside shot as well as some of the Celtics players can, it's very difficult to double McHale. Pistons lead cut to one. Double team on Lane Beer, and he draws the foul. Danny Ainge was doubling. Lane Beer knew he was going to be doubled and maybe tripled and wanted to get that shot off quickly for the foul. But by little people, he knew he could get it off. 6.40 on the clock in the third. You know, the Pistons, in an effort to get the ball more often in the hands of Kelly Trapuca, run a play called Hawk 3. The play begins with Isaiah advancing the ball. Joe Dumas will run to set a baseline pick underneath the basket. Team leading Detroit, that's worked to perfection today. Not, no, not so much Hawk 3, but all of those plays off screen. Lane Beer is not a big favorite here in Boston. Well, he's had several fights with uh, involving Celtic players, and uh, I don't like him here. You're right. But he's got 12 rebounds and nine points, and has outplayed Robert Parrish's opposite number. People in Detroit love him. <laughs> Three-point lead for the Pistons. Dumars trying to make life tough for Dennis Johnson. Aren't very many guards willing to go up and play tough defense end to end like Joe Dumars? Double team on Bird. Johnson was open. Goes inside. Outlet to Thomas. Three on one break. Dumars, age back. Great pass from Dumars to Ken Benson. Celtics thought he traveled. Eyes in back of his head. And Casey Jones is angry. And he's been hit with a technical foul, has KC. Daryl Garrison didn't like some of the words coming out of KC's mouth. KC, you know, claiming that he walked with that thing, but they got up and at Danny Ainge, a three-on-one situation. Technical is made. Dumars, almost a blind pass behind him. There's Danny Ainge. He ends up having to guard three guys, and a uh, nice lay-down pass that time to Benson. But you, know, you know, Dick, something I see in this game so is Dennis Johnson's wrist. He's turning down the outside shot a little bit. He did the last time, and then he decided to go in, so it's something to watch. Larry Bird comes back, and maybe it's Bird time in Boston. 83 to 79, the score. Detroit leading. Bird defending against the Cuba. Lane Beer. Rebound, Paris. Celtic crowd is into the game now. Bird scored the last two. Haynes gets these two. When they double down from on top, Danny Ainge has hit his outside shots today. Dennis Johnson hasn't. 22nd timeout. Larry Bird will get you going. Remember against Philadelphia. In January, he hit those three three-pointers, and that's what Larry Bird has done, the tremendous impact. And as we told you, he has six triple doubles in his last ten games, and that is a team man because not only is scoring in double figures, but you're getting the ball out off the boards in double figures and assists. And if he can pass the ball, he is so effective. And that's what the matchup has meant today between the two of them, Bird and Kelly Trapuca of Detroit. Well, he's, a, he's probably the premier go-to guy because when you get the ball in his hands, he's smart enough to know when to take the shot and when to make the pass. Detroit trying to hold off Boston right now, leading by two with 5-12 remaining in the third. Thomas over Ames. Isaiah Thomas with 21 is the high scorer for the Pistons. Birds 22 leads Boston. Celtics have contained the penetration a lot better, but uh, Isaiah is shooting over him. Johnson. So watch whether he will take that outside shot of giving it. Ball away is short. Ames is there to keep it alive. Penetrating is DJ. Walton. 
What a great cheerleader he has been, and a sincere one on the bench for Boston. 85-83 Pistons. Dennis Johnson is back on Isaiah Thomas with Trapuca out of the ball game. Eight on the clock. Over McHale, Trapuca is short. Aim fouled over the top by Kent Benson. That was really smart defense that time by the Celtics. Danny Ainge ended up with uh, Trapuca underneath, and McHale made a quick switch. Harris is out of the ball game, and Greg Kite is in. He has seen a lot of action lately as the third-year center from Brigham Young. Ideal substitute. Really works hard in practice to help the other centers. Bird for three. The crowd was ready to erupt. They have to hold it down at least for the next time. I wonder why Walton hasn't come in. He usually comes in ahead of Kite. He does. Kite with the rebound on Thomas's miss, and the Celtics can tie it up. Johnson. Oh. And Detroit gets the rebound. And a foul call. Dennis Johnson is 4 for 13 from the field, so his injured wrist may indeed be bothering him. He's turned down any number of outside shots to take it to the hoop. He's been playing the last few weeks looking more for the outside shot than anything. Benson with four fouls. And a few words for the official goes to the bench, replaced by Earl Curitan. Double on Bird. Trapuca stays with him. Looking for McHale. Curitan commits the foul. Four team fouls on Detroit. One more in there in the penalty. It would have taken just the play of Larry Bird not to lose possession of that ball that time. What poise on the double. Four fouls on Curitan. And McHale goes in on him for the layup. 17 for Kevin McHale off the bench today. And seven for seven from the field. He missed only one shot in 11 Friday night. Uh, looks like Kevin's back and then some. Thomas. Height. Out of traffic. High score. Boston looking to take the lead. The Celtic crowd is with him and a Detroit foul, and they'll go to the line. It's the 15 foul against the Pistons. With Kite in there, here's Rick Mahorn coming back in for Detroit. So uh, we might see some physical play inside. Well, I call him Rick Matterhorn. He's like a mountain. The only thing missing from him is snow on the top. I mean, he really is a wide body. Vinny Johnson will also check in for Detroit. He scored five points. And he can be explosive. So there's Mahorn. The claim he's a little bit overweight and lost his mobility at the power forward. But with the one-step drop for rebounding at the center position, he's been more productive. Jerry Seasting is into the ball game. Dennis Johnson goes out for the Celtics. He has scored five, but has had to guard both Thomas and Trapuca. That's the tough situation there. The Celtics now are going to have better outside shooting than they had with DJ in there. Celtics have run off eight straight points. Mahorn, physical big man is in there, so they got Lane Beer and Mahorn at the same time. Lane Beer ties the score. Boy, do they look for Lane Beer. Anytime you stray off him two steps, he's getting the ball. Ains guarded by Dumars. Doubling around Bird. Danny Ains inside. Height gets the offensive ball. Great height. Battling his way to the Celtics. Two-point lead again. Two and a half to play in the third. Off the screen, Trapuca. McHale clears. Bird ahead. Johnson is back. Bird. And they're going to call the loose ball foul. Against the Celtics. Kite, the third center, doing this. A great kite on the boards. Look at him create some space for himself on the right of your picture. And then good up fake. Lambeer afraid to foul. Gives him the shot. Over to Philadelphia 76ers next Sunday on CBS Sports. Speaking of Larry Bird with six triple doubles in his last ten games, I was surprised yesterday when he told me that he has indeed been looking for some of these personal achievements. 
halfway through the season is the toughest time in, in this league. And uh, right now, I've got to shoot for something. And, and really, I, I am going for the triple-double sum because, you know, there's nothing else to do out there. We're winning and we're playing well. So I, I believe that if I go out and try to get the assist, uh, opposed to going out and trying to score 30 or 40 points, it helps our team out. How candid is that? But look at Larry Bird doing some things you don't see anyone else do. Friday night against the Clippers, on his back, finding Bill Walton for the basket. He does that, and uh, now he finds himself in a tough battle with the Celtics leading by two, and that's where he is on his way to perhaps another triple-double. You know, that pass uh, that he made to Walton on laying on his back, the greatest part of that play was he kept his composure, looked Nymphius, the man in the lane, off with the pass and allowed Walton to streak down a lane to give it to him. He's such a candid guy, Larry Bird. A lot of guys would give you the stock answer. No, I don't care about the individual numbers, but he admits that the team is playing well, and, you know, he's told other people that he gets bored sometimes on the court. Imagine how it is with him that the game is that easy for him. Uh, I, I think he gets great fun out of little things in the game right now. Uh, doing it to a particular player that he doesn't like, maybe... Or something like that. Celtics maintain possession after Kite misses the free throw. 2-10 to go. Memphis State and Louisville are tied at halftime. We'll take another look at that. Stripped away of Mahorn and a kick ball. It'll be Detroit possession. Memphis State and Louisville in the Metro tied at 62. Two minutes to go in the third period. And right now we have a, another fine ball game. We've had 12 ties, 31 lead changes. Celtics by two. Dumars, the 10 on the shot clock. Vinnie Johnson, short for Puka. Boxed out by Bird. Seasting in the backcourt with Ames for the Celtics. Mahorn trying to muscle McHale. Bird gets it into Kevin McHale. And they'll call the foul on Mahorn. And a two-shot situation. Kevin got hit in the face, and he wants uh, time just so he can see. Uh, here he comes, and Mahorn, when he fouls you, he fouls you. Bill Walton, who has seen very little action in this game. He played six minutes in the first half, and the first time we've seen him in the second half, Greg Kite, a favorite here, gets a hand. Uh, they like to cheer this kid because he plays hard all the time, but Walton, why he's coming in second behind Kite, I don't know. Kite had two points and five rebounds, but that's one of, right now, the unanswered question. Free throws by McHale, and it's 91-87. Matches the Celtics' biggest lead of the game. 120 on the clock. The horn setting one of those picks that Tommy was talking about. Lane Beer hits. Bill Lane Beer with 14. They pick you back to the middle like that. Something's going to happen good on the weak side. McHale goes in against the horn. They're going to Kevin McHale. No question about that. 21 points for McHale. Age has 20, but Bird leads with 24. I don't think they've given Dumas the green light to really penetrate, except on these type of plays, pick and roll. Nine on the clock. Walton got a piece of that shot by Mahorn, and here come the Celtics trying to make it a six-point lead. McHale's hot. Fourteen points this period for Kevin McHale, and the biggest lead of the ball game for Boston. Took a long vacation when the team was out on the West Coast. Feels a lot better right now. And they won without him. Blaine Beer blocked by McCann. Walk to Ames. Three on two. Celtics. Ames. The Pistons will take the last shot. 18 to four. Have the Celtics outscored the Detroit Pistons? Biggest lead for either team right now. And Dumars is fouled with one second on the clock. And now they say it's a foul against Detroit. And Lane Beer is close to a technical foul. And he's got it. We're going to see why he's upset. Bird is trying to fight through the pick. 
And uh, they, he deposits Bird down there, and he wanted a foul on Bird. Chuck Daly said, my man doesn't argue that much. Why is it technical? Lane Beer is still man. You better cool off or he'll be gone. He's got four personals also. One second to go. Bird. Short. And that's the end of the third period with the score. Boston 98, Detroit 89. We'll be back after this word from your local station. The one period thanks to Trapuca and Thomas, and they actually gained on the Celtics and led by three at the half. But in the third period, a 19-4 run by the Celtics have given him a 98-89 lead after the third period. Coaches love Rick Mahorn for stuff like this. When he sets a pick, you get jarred, and good things. Now, look at Seasting trying to keep Mahorn off the, the glass and just nonchalantly deposit Seasting on the seat of his pants. Start of the fourth period, Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn. Mahorn goes to the bench. Just an average day for Rick Mahorn. <laughs> Ken Benson is back in there. Lane Beer, who's hit with the technical, has four fouls. Loop it into McHale, tips it in on the Bill Walton's pass. Walton is renowned here in Boston now for his passing ability. Beautiful. Pistons had a, five, a lead of 85-79 with five minutes to go in the third period. They've been outscored 21-4 to four since then. Walton anticipated that pass. Thomas regains it. Five on the shot clock. Intercepted by Ames. Celtics are on a roll. Ames. Seasting. Benson the rebound. 11-point lead for the Celtics in what has been an incredibly close affair for most of this game. And Thomas driving in his foul. Watch this pass. Walton to McHale just lays it up soft enough and high enough for him to easily tip it in. Some guys would bang that pass off the glass. Soft pass. That works. Thomas with 21 points leading Detroit. He has 12 assists. Hits the free throw. Bird with 24. Ainge is 23. McHale is the leading scorer for Boston with 25. And Parrish, who has not done all that much, but has got to be well-rested, coming in in a hand for Kevin McHale. What well, a game for him. Parrish and Walton being in the game. Riley, Pat Riley calls this group on the court right now for the Celtics the bludgeon unit. I mean, it's banging on the boys. McHale goes out. Perfect 10 for 10. Shooting. Nine-point lead for the Celtics. Just a minute going by. And a turnover. Lane Beer. Try to get the ball into Parrish. Thomas. Trying to go on the back of Walt and is fouled. Walton had his back turned, and Thomas tried to sneak in. Somebody forgot to pick him up. You know, Bill Walton, of course, has always been a Celtic fan, he has told people, but he proved it a couple of years ago. He went up to Red Auerbach in the office. He said, look, can you give me some Celtic souvenirs for my kids? And he gave him a, Red gave him a T-shirt, I guess, and a couple of hats. And now, uh, now Red's paying him. Now Red's paying him. <laughs> and getting how some dividends. Feel, huh? How would you have felt if you were a Clipper, you know, you were the owner of the Clippers or the general manager when he was doing that? Don't think they wanted to know that. <laughs> <laughs> so the Pistons are down by 11 and scored four in a row here. Celtics by seven. Celtics are 23 and 1 at Boston Garden, 25 and 1, counting two games in Hartford. Six on the 24 second clock. Seasting. Short. You can hear him yelling. But there was Walton. That was great defense on that play by the Pistons, but that super rebound by Walton just too much. Thomas over to Benson. Short. Remember about the Pistons? You live and die by the outside shot. They've lived with it through most of this game, but now they're under the gun, trailing by nine, and nearly two minutes gone by in the fourth period. Double on Bird with Johnson and Trapuca and the Detroit foul. Going to see Walton with a real terrific rebound. Look at him get inside. Now he carves out some room against Trapuca. Make sure he gets a hand on it, and then up strong for the stuff. Harris from Walton, and another piston foul. When you don't have the strength inside, as Detroit does it, 
it can start to take its toll, and it is now. Well, particularly with this unit that the Celtics have on the court right now. They've got three players that they can use in the low post, and all of them can score. And McHale's on the bench. Ames, baseline. Air ball, Isaiah Thomas. Try to get it to Lane Beer. Celtics were there to slap it away. They played him for the pass. They faked at him and then got back and played him for the pass. Nine-point Boston lead. About a minute and a half gone by in this final period. That's the little guessing game that defenders play against penetrators. Bird. Doubled again. Open man ceasing. Ames. Quick pass. Big game for Danny Ames. 25 points. His jump shot is back. Which serves notice on the rest of the NBA that the best record in the league may get even better. Benson has missed two in a row now, and Walton outlets to Seasting. Ainge on the wing, couldn't control, and turns it over. Dennis Johnson back into the ball game for the Celtics. Seasting goes out. Seasting has only scored two points, but he's been part of the green team bench effort for Boston. Giving that extra effort makes winners. The All You Can Be, sponsored by the U.S. Army. At just 5'7", Atlanta's Spud Webb is a David among NBA Goliaths. Spud compensates for his short stature with blazing speed, enabling him to dart by taller opponents. A 42-inch vertical leap elevates Spud among the league's best, showcased during his victory in the slam dunk championship. He's an NBA standout because Spud Webb strives to be the best he can be. Hey, that was a great answer. Where'd you learn about the... The Celtics have used three big people, Bird, Walton, and Parrish, and the Pistons are using Trapuca and Lambeer and Benson. That's not their biggest front line. Pistons have not scored a basket in the last four minutes of the game, and you can see how their shooting has gone down from 70 to 40%. Under nine minutes to go. Plenty of time for Detroit if they can straighten things out. Pistons have won ten in a row, a club record. Milwaukee had ten straight before they lost to the Bullets today. Kelly Trapeek is short, and Wal Walton has not played much, but now he has, and he is dominating both boards. Well, the Celtics just broke down the rhythm of that play by the Pistons. They have turned up the defense an extra notch here in the latter stages of the third and into the fourth. Walton Benson the rebound to Thomas. Should have made that one. Celtics have won two of three against the Pistons this year. Lane Beer popping outside hits. He has been reliable. He's hit some big baskets when they needed it. When he comes up on a fast break, they're not reluctant at all to give him the shot from the outside. Nearly four minutes elapsed in this final period. Bird finds Dennis Johnson all alone. Somebody, Ben Vinny Johnson, missed it. If you double, the weak side better start rotating to that open man, the cutter. Once again, an 11-point lead. Off the screen is Vinny Johnson. And he hits. Isaiah Thomas with 25, leads the Pistons. That was the option play to Hawk 3 that they usually use for Tribuca. Against Tribuca, Bird. Walton is inside, and Bird just changed direction. <laughs> oh, fakes with the ball. He could turn people around. Right now, they're trading baskets. That's not good for Detroit. Maybe less than trading. As Trapuca misses, gets the ball back to Kelly. Vinny Johnson. But now the Pistons are going to have to do the job defensively if they want to get back in this game. Boston, they'll take the fast break when it shows, but they now have that those three low post players to go to. And McHale on the bench. Bird inside. Doesn't go, and a fine pass. Good anticipation by Dennis Johnson. Let's take a look at Larry Bird. Last time down the court, the double develops. And a little fake there, and they all kind of run away from him. You've got to be kidding me. He's going to score. 6.52 remaining. Timeout. First personal foul. 
today year because you'll have so much interest in each round. I think even the first round will have interest because you may see a team that has played well get knocked off and, uh, and so many dark horse sleeper teams emerging. So I think this is going to be an extra special NCAA championship this year. Larry Bird getting close to that triple-double, which would make it seven out of his last 11 games. But right now, the Celtics lead 110-99 with a little more than halfway through this final period. Vinny Johnson, long range, hits again. Oh, they're turning Vinny loose. Three in a row for Vinny, 11 in the game for Johnson. It's turned into a half-court game. Celtics taking their time, trying to set up good play percentage shots. Bird inside Paris. And they're going to call a foul on Isaiah Thomas. They've tried several different ways, the Celtics, to get that ball inside. Next foul on Pistons will be their fifth in the, the penalty. And Walton and Lambeer. They look for Walton. Lambeer denying. Kapuka run through a screen, leaving Walton inside, and Walton will go to the line. Well executed play by two big times. <laughs> it was a great fake to Bird. <laughs> the entire Pistons defense got the two guys. Watch this fake by Walton. Fakes the pass. They know that Walton likes to pass. He swoops in there. That's what good passing and faking of passing can do. Pistons in the penalty, and Bill Lambeer has five personal fouls. One more, and he's out of there. McHale, 25 points. Ainge, 25. Bird, 28, is the game's high score. The last time out, they took the ball out of the hands of Isaiah Thomas and let Vinnie Johnson go one-on-one. -on -one. Isaiah is usually the guy that would want to penetrate at this stage of the ball game to try and create some openings for the big guy. It stayed 11 points, basically. Celtics leading throughout this period. Thomas misses. Bird gets another rebound. That's his ninth rebound. Excellent defense by Danny Ainge that time to contain Isaiah's penetration. Ainge's career high is 26. He's one away from that. Bird and Trapuka elbowed each other, and they'll call the foul on Kelly. Chuck Daly told me before the ball game, you know, they're not fast breaking an awful lot, the Celtics, but they will fast break when it's there, and that's how they broke this game open a little bit. Pistons with a 10 game winning streak. Most of those wins have been teams with under 500 logs on the season. Celtics have the longest winning streak of the season, 13, broken at Sacramento. Bird is talking to Danny Ainge on a free throw line that time, saying, now listen, now keep Isaiah under control now, will you? Biggest lead of the ball game. Oh. Thomas inside. Oh, get out. Celtics have it. They've just taken the game away with a 19-4 run in the last five minutes of the third period, and then just keeping the Pistons out of it here, and Bird goes in, the basket counts, and there's a foul. Somehow, the Celtics never seem to be overly concerned about Detroit because of the fact they know they can work inside both ways. Well, they know that Trapuca got caught behind a pick that time and allowed Bird to come off, get the easy pass, and come down the lane. So they've got an awful lot of places to go against this Pistons big man defense. Bird is 11 for 11 at the free throw line today. Traveling and so the Pistons beginning to unravel here. They've played impressive ball for a half and then uh, the seven minutes of the third period and then the roof came in. Well, then you see who the uh, Pistons have to go to to counter the big men play of the Celtics. They go to their guards for jumpers from 15 feet. Technical foul. Bill Beer has been another one. Two technicals have been issued here. Now Isaiah Thomas and Lambeer both joying at Daryl Garrison. Here's Chuck Daly's reaction. Uh, go ahead, call it. He knew he was going to call it. That's that's the usual yeah. coach's expression. I know you're going to call it. Call it. Daly and Thomas hit with the technicals. Danny Ainge will shoot him. 
I want to remind you at the conclusion of the game, Tom and I will select the Miller Lite Most Valuable Player of the Game, and in conjunction with the award, Miller Lite will present a check for $1,000 to the National Multiple Sclerosis Foundation in that player's name. Celtics have it, leading now by 18 points. Danny Ainge has a career high of 27 as a result of the free throws. Talked about players in the game, and here's why. Electrifying, animated, wears his emotion on a sleeve. Charles Barkley, the sensational second year. Well, Tommy, at one point, the Pistons led 83 to 77 virtually midway through the third period, and the Celtics have outscored Detroit 44-18 to to break open this game with 4.44 to go. You know, Dick, sometimes I think the Celtics lull you into a false sense of security and then pounce on you with real good defense at the right time. They let you feel that you got certain things going against their defense, and then they take it away at the, the most opportune time. As we told you, a career high for Danny Ainge with 27 points. Walt blocks Isaiah Thomas. He's got to be a little frustrated at this point. He can do only so much. And it's interesting how Parrish hadn't done much at halftime and Walt was on the bench. And they come at you in waves. That's the way the Pistons must think of the Celts today. The bludgeon unit. Rebounding and good power. Tall defense. Walt. Lead for Vinny Johnson who turns it over. The Detroit Pistons. Not gain any ground on the Milwaukee Bucks. For the Celtics, Walton and Ames, and they have blown out the Pistons. Standing ovation for the Celtic bench. Dennis Johnson hitting from outside. Larry Bird is out of the ball game with 35 points. Nine rebounds and seven assists. No triple-double today for Larry. Cure it. And the Pistons are stuck on 101 for quite a while now with 320 remaining in the game. Turnover. Traveling against Dennis Johnson. Well, they've got Curtin in there right now for the Pistons, and he's got a height advantage over David Thirdkill. Well, maybe they'll try the Pistons develop an inside game with Curtin a little bit. Thomas. Rebound Dennis Johnson. Sam Vincent is in the game, the rookie from Michigan State who hasn't played much lately. Thirdkill, the former Piston. And it's still Celtics ball. And into the game, Rick Carlisle for the Celtics. Tony Campbell for the Pistons. Greg Kite also in for the Celtics. Walton's got someone over his shoulder. What an enjoyable time it's been for the redhead from California. Oh, he's going to practice tomorrow and keep working on that outside shot, though. <laughs> Two in a row, not for me. Celtic bench. With that kind of a scoring edge, Earl Curit, or check, check that, John Long, who was the forgotten man we talked about, replacing Isaiah Thomas. Long was five for five, by the way, in Friday's game, but really hasn't played much. Louisville beats Memphis State 70 to 69. A lot of people think Louisville could be one of those teams that will turn it on in the NCAA championship. And, you know, Dick, uh, one of the reasons why uh, the Pistons came up with that three-guard rotation. John Long missed four practices by for legitimate reasons, and all of a sudden, uh, they found that uh, Vinnie Johnson started to play better in Dumars and, and Isaiah. It's like Lou Gehrig losing, you know, taking over from what was his name? Oh, Wally Pitt. That's right. He never got his job back. Isaiah Thomas on the bench. He will get his job back. 25 points, 14 <laughs> assists, and six rebounds. 
for the Wizard of the Pistons. 235 remaining, 123 to 101. Tony Campbell. Third kill battling his former teammate Lane Beer and a loose ball foul against third kill. The Celtics only loss at Boston Garden this year was to the Portland Trailblazers. And they got blown out in that one with a lot of great fast break basketball by the Trailblazers. And uh, the Pistons did not run as much as they have in previous games. Well, that was one of the things they didn't do much anymore. They were more controlled. Vincent all the way down. The basket counts and a foul. A glimpse of the future for the Boston Celtics. Sam Vincent. Well, here's a kid that hasn't played an awful lot. He injured his ankle, was playing a little bit prior to the injury, but they have high hopes for him in the future. One of the problems they've been playing him with C Sting is that they are very small at the guard position. Here's Chuck Nevitt, seven feet five inches tall, former Laker. Chuck Daly calls him. Chuck Nevitt, an intriguing player. <laughs> Translated means he's not ready yet. 25-point <laughs> lead for the Celtics, and if you had tuned in through most of the third period, you wouldn't believe this score right now. The Celtics have just run away, dominated the boards and everything else. Joe Dumars hit the shot. But we're getting to the time of the year, Tommy, that people are going to look at the record, and a lot of coaches' jobs could be in jeopardy. You know, ultimately, that happens every year, and uh, no different this season. Campbell ahead of the field with a basket. And now the game opens up with 145 to go. 126-105, Boston. Height down low. Celtics will win five in a row and make it 26 out of 29. Height travels. You know, one of those people who a lot of people think could be in jeopardy is Hubie Brown, the coach of the New York Knicks, who have had a a nightmarish year with injuries to Bernard King and Cartwright and even Ewing out for a while, but I have a feeling that Yubi Brown will be back as coach of the New York Knicks and see what he can do with a healthier team. I say Yubi will be back with the New York Knicks, and a lot of people say that he's one of the best bench coaches you'll find. Well, he certainly gets his team playing hard. He hasn't had a uh, wealth of talent for a complete season the last two years, so... Uh, I don't know why they should be faulting him. I want to see what he does with a healthy team before I fire him. Well, you saw you saw him take the Knicks to seven games against the Celtics a couple of years ago. Campbell misses the jumper. Third kill the rebound with under a minute to go. Next Sunday, the Indiana Pacers against the Philadelphia 76ers. Carlisle and Kite team up there. What does it mean for a guy like Kite in practice? He really tests those other centers, doesn't he? I mean, he plays hard the whole time. He's got the perfect temperament to be a, a 10th or 11th guy on the bench. Nevitt working against Kite. Air ball, but Curitan is there. 128 to 107. Pistons. Club record 10 game winning streak down the drain today. Third kill goes in and is foul. That's why he is an intriguing player, Chuck Nevitt, at his size. He might be a Manu Ball type of player defensively, or he's a lot better offensively than Manu Ball. David, third kill. Two shots. This is his first shot. You saw a shot of the Celtic bench with a lot of the heavy contributors for them today. Larry Bird with 35. Kevin McHale with 25, an incredible shooting. Danny Ainge, though, very important game for him because he had been mired in a slump, but 27 points, a career high for Ainge today. I'll tell you one thing. I think the uh, Pistons are going to do very well in the playoffs. It ought to be uh, supposed to lock horns with the Atlanta Hawks, which uh, ought to be an interesting series. Well, the Hawks have the, the, the strength on the boards, but the Pistons have the experience in the playoffs. That'll count. Wetman with two seconds to go, misses, and the game is over. The Celtics, 26 and one at home. The Boston Celtics have defeated the Detroit Pistons, ending their 10-game winning streak, 129 to 109. A clean and solid 20-point victory, and we'll be back at Boston Garden. But right now, let's send you to Fairfax, Virginia, the American Cup Gymnastics, and for an update, let's go to John Tesh. John.